In this video, we'll be going over some of the different ways you can use ChatGPT to find and research new stocks. And we'll be reviewing several different prompts that you can use to help you in that effort. Now, one of the ways that you can find different stocks is by looking through stock screeners on sites like Yahoo Finance or on social media. Otherwise, we can actually use ChatGPT now. So you can ask it about any sector, but for this example, I'm asking it to generate a list of all the public companies that build carbon capture systems. And it's going to ask a few clarifying questions to understand what you're looking for. So first off, it's asking me if I'm only interested in companies that build carbon capture systems, if I should include companies that operate them as well, if I want global companies or only companies based in a specific region, or if I'm looking for large caps only, or if I'm okay with smaller or newly listed firms. And I'm okay with companies that operate the carbon capture systems. Finding any company globally is fine by me, and I'm open to investing in smaller companies because I am a microcap investor. And now it does that, and I'm using a deep research prompt here, so it will search the internet for any possible source it can find in generating a list of companies. Now it completed that in 22 minutes, so it's going to take some time for these deep research functions. In the end, it picked 28 different sources to use, and it searched the internet 373 times. And now it generated this list. And you'll notice going through here that a lot of these companies are not actually focused on carbon capture only. They're actually operating in the oil and gas sector or steel making and things of that nature. Now, for this example, and just in general, I'm going to be looking for pure play carbon capture companies that aren't operating in any other sector. Looking through this list, the three companies that fit that criteria for me are Auker Carbon Capture, and if we scroll down, also Capsule Technologies and Lonza Tech, which is right here. Now, let's say that I'm an investor that only wants to invest in the United States, then the only company that's going to fit that criteria is going to be Lonza Tech because it's listed on the NASDAQ. Capsule is listed in Norway on the Oslo Exchange, and so is Auker. So... The only company here that I want to look at particularly is going to be Lonza Tech. Let's say I want to research further to see if it's going to be something I might want to buy. Now we can do that by using some different prompts. Now I'm going to have all of these linked to different pages on my Substack in the description. I'll have them all down there so you don't actually have to type this all in yourself. But this is going to be a fast stock analysis report prompt. So the general goal here is to pretty quickly generate a summary of the fundamentals of a company. So looking at the prompt, we're basically just telling the user that we need to put in the stock name and the ticker symbol. So we will replace those here. And then going down to the instructions, we can see that we are telling it to generate a concise financial analysis report on the company specified above. And we have different sections here. So first off, we're going to start with the company overview. It's basically going to be a brief description of the company uh, and what they're trying to do. Then we're going to see the business model, which is how they make money in their key revenue streams. Then the products, projects, and services. So any major developments there. Any potential growth opportunities. Then we're going to move to industry analysis. Just trying to see the size of the industry and what the trends might be briefly. Then we're going to look at the key competitors and other examples of companies in the industry doing the same thing. Then we're going to see any partnerships, potential moats, which are essentially competitive advantages that make it more difficult for competitors to compete with the company that we're looking at. So some examples of those would be network effects or patents or branding, intellectual property, things of that nature. And then we're going to look at the management team, a bit of a brief financial analysis and the risks the company's facing and any upcoming news or catalysts. And we also have some relatively straightforward formatting guidelines for the AI. So if we go back to ChatGPT, we paste that in. We can see I've changed the stock name and the ticker symbol to Lonzatech. And then if we scroll down, we can see that it took a minute and 42 seconds. It did 16 searches of the internet and used 35 sources to generate a relatively brief overview of the company for us. We can see that Lonza Tech was founded in New Zealand in 2005, now headquartered in Chicago. We can see what their technology does. They've scaled to six plants operating on three continents. We can see their business model is primarily licensing and engineering services. And they also have a few different products, royalties, 
contract research. And if we scroll down further, we can see the different products or projects that they're working on. And we can see some examples of their pipeline, a brief industry analysis, some of the tailwinds and headwinds of the industry and its size and growth rate. Then we can see some competitors or example companies of doing similar things in the carbon capture space, partnerships with companies like Brookfield Renewable, which gave them up to $500 million. And they're also partnered with some other large companies like ArcelorMittal. These are not going to be comprehensive. These are just going to be some general bullet points and some examples to go off of. We'll get into more comprehensive information gathering pretty soon here. But moving on, looking at the potential moats, we can see they have a very large patent portfolio, over 1,300 patents. So particularly the technology is going to be the main moat here. The embedded partnerships and different companies they're working with is also helpful. We can see the management team here some examples of who's on it. Certainly not a comprehensive list again, but just some examples. And then we have a financial analysis. We can see the revenue is down year over year. Full year revenue for 2024 is around $50 million. Gross profit for Q4 of $6.5 million. Pretty high gross margins because of a licensing business. Operating expenses of $33.5 million in Q4, so pretty significant. Net loss of $27 million. Again, pretty significant. Don't like to see that. And cash is down to 58.1 million as of December 2024. So we can see it's noted that the liquidity runway could be a bit of a problem and that they've had profitability issues. And then we can see various risks. Of course, that's going to be commonplace with some of these newer technologies and companies that are unprofitable. And then we can see some different upcoming news and catalysts that could help the stock price. So that's a quick overview. So it can take 10 to 20 minutes to read something like that. And then you can get a great feeling for if you might want to research a stock further. So that's why I really like using that prompt. You would not use deep research for that because deep research can take 10 to 20 minutes just to generate the report itself. By that time, we've already generated this report and read through it. So you can get a better idea if you want to dive in further. And if you do, you can use a deep research report, which we have on Substack as well. Again, this will be in the description. And this is going to be a much more in-depth prompt. And again, we are inserting the company name and ticker symbol at the top. And that's all you have to do. Then we can see the instructions. We are telling the AI that it needs to look for the industry and the sector the company is operating in. It needs to look for the investor relations page and some other general guidelines as to how to generate the report. Now, an interesting thing to note about AI, if you don't know, is that they tend to have trouble following word length guidelines. So chances are the report will not be 3,000 words. In my experience so far using deep research, it's going to give you a lengthy word count. It's going to be upwards of 10,000 words. This is when you really want to get an in-depth report and you want to dive in further and get as much information as possible. So this is when you have a good idea of if you'd like the stock or not, and you just need to get more information. Starting off with the outline here, we're gonna have many of the same things from the last report, but we're gonna outline different specific searches that it should do of the internet using the company name and then company overview, and what does the company do? And it's going to do a lot of different searches like this to try to determine what the company does. And we're gonna see that for the various different sections here as well. So if we keep scrolling down, again, we have the business model, we have the products, services, and projects, industry analysis, competitive landscape, strategic partnerships and collaborations, economic modes, management team. We're asking a lot of different questions and diving further into the specifics of the company in a lot of these different internet searches. We have the financial analysis and the potential capital structure of the company and dilution risk and different risk and headwinds and the upcoming catalysts and growth drivers again. So that's a brief overview of what the prompt looks like. And if you paste that into ChatGPT, again, changing the name and the ticker symbol to Lonzatech for this example. And if we scroll down here, then we can see that it's asking us a question again. And it wants to know if we want visual elements like tables or charts. And I replied that tables would be useful and plain text is fine for the format of the report delivery. If we scroll down, the research report was created in 26 minutes. ChatGPT used 45 different sources and conducted 88 searches of the internet. 
Now looking at this report here, something you'll notice is that this is extremely long. Just scrolling through the whole thing here. This is approximately 28,000 words. That would take you several hours to read, probably, at a minimum. And that's about 100 pages, I believe. So that's going to be far too long for a digestible way to try to understand if we want to invest in this or not relatively quickly. Eventually, you might want to read something of this length, but for now, the initial deep research output is probably going to be too long. So we're going to need to summarize that, and we're going to do that with another prompt. Now, the only way to have the AI generally follow a word count is to ask the user to continue after each section to ensure appropriate word length, meaning after each section is over, it will ask us if we want to proceed. And we're giving it general guidelines for each section here that it needs to be around 500 words. When you split it up into different sections, it's far more likely to generally follow the word count. Again, it's not going to do it perfectly, but we're not looking for 30,000 words. I think five to 10,000 is a lot more manageable. Probably take you under an hour to read, depending on how long it ends up being. But yeah, going through the prompt here, again, we're going to have many of the same sections, and it's going to summarize all the same details that we've been going over so far, pretty much. So we're going to take the output from this deep research report that we made initially, and we're just going to paste that into a document and put that into ChatGPT again. And we're going to use the prompt that I just went over. We're going to have it summarize that document. Now scrolling down here so we can see that this one is a lot shorter, a lot more condensed, and it's around 7,300 words. So far more manageable and far more concise for us to go over. Just running through it relatively briefly because it's already been a pretty long video. We have more in-depth explanation of what the core business is and their market role and some developments here just generally starting off with the company overview. Then again, we're going to the business model, all the different things that they're working on, a lot of the different operational model characteristics, value proposition for the customer base, a recent performance, going to the different projects and services here. Again, a lot of different information that's very useful for us to try to understand what this company actually does and who they're working with. We have a bit of an industry analysis here. We're going to dive into fully researching an industry in a different video, but for now, this kind of gives us a general overview of the different sectors that they're working in, and as well as their geographical focus and their overall market outlook. Then we can see the competitive landscape and the examples of different companies in the different sectors that they're working on. And again, these are just some examples. Obviously, if we want a fully comprehensive list of things like this, we'll have to look at that actual deep research report. And even then, it might not be fully comprehensive. Might have to do another prompt for it, but you can find that information relatively easily. Then we can go into the strategic partnerships, collaborations as an individual section. They're working with Lonza Jet, which is a subsidiary of theirs, steel industry partners, oil and chemical majors, different brands, different spin outs. Economic moats, more in depth here, IP and trade secrets, a first mover advantage, strategic ecosystem, a relatively high switching costs, so it's definitely interesting as well. More in depth information on the management team. Again, we'll go over in another video how to do some more in depth research on a management team fully, but this will give us more of an overview of what's going on there. And again, all these sections are just very long, so I'm just not going to go through all of that but we're just going to show off that everything's working as intended. And we can see various sections of the income statement here, losses, balance sheet, liquidity, capital structure, even provides some financial ratios for us. Then we can see the capital structure and dilution risk and kind of scroll through that a little bit. They have an ATM as well. Then in most sections, it'll give you a bit of an overall assessment. And we can see the upcoming catalysts for some Lonza Jet projects, and uh, some different aspects there. New consumer products, medium to long range catalysts. Then we can see key investment risks. A lot of these we already know already, but getting a little bit more information about that. Liquidity and financial risk, execution, technological commercialization, regulatory, competitive, and so on and so forth. And then we get a summary at the end here, going over the bullish aspects and the bearish aspects as well. So very in depth, a lot more manageable in terms of reading that 
And quite frankly, this is a lot of the same information that I would put in a report if I was making one myself. Now, previously under green investing, I was actually making investment reports that were around the same length. This is around 6,700 words, so very similar length to what we got from ChatGPT there. And I needed to spend a week on making that. Meanwhile, this report was made in 30 minutes in total, taking deep research and then summarizing that. So I cannot emphasize enough how insane that is. And you're getting approximately 80 to 90% of the way there in terms of what an investor can outline in a report. You're getting very close to AI doing all of this for you. Now, what you're missing is some of those qualitative factors, right? You're missing the expertise of the investor that's making the report and how they view it. You're really just getting AI's take and you can't really count on that. You're also missing some of the other qualitative factors. For example, Peter Lynch used to talk about how he would see the expansion of chains like Dunkin' Donuts or Taco Bell or La Quinta. And he would see that before a lot of the people on Wall Street would because they're not going out and shopping at those places. They're actually just looking at the numbers. Now, the problem with AI is that it's going to get those numbers potentially a few months later than someone that's seeing it on the ground. So that's one of the aspects you're missing, particularly with management teams. You're also missing that where AI can't truly tell you if a management team's qualified or not or if they're likable people and things like that, which matters more than most people realize. That's a key aspect that AI can't do for you, but you're getting 80 to 90% of the way there, maybe a little less. Either way, it's pretty crazy to see how far it's advanced and it's only gonna get better. It can do a lot of this grunt work for you. It can outline a lot of the information you need to make an investment decision. You can't depend on AI to pick stocks for you because of some of those shortcomings that it has and ultimately you do need to understand what you're investing in because you can't blame the ai for being wrong about a stock pick it's ultimately your decision what you're investing in so you have to fact check a lot of these things ai can hallucinate at times that is a known issue where it can come up with information that doesn't exist so you might have to fact check a lot of this stuff but point being you can see where the information is coming from so you can look at those sources and make sure that some of the important aspects are accurate. And we'll go over in other videos how you can reduce some of the hallucinations and some of the impact that will have. And you can have more confidence in the data with things like Notebook LM. So we can go over that as well. But yeah, if you're trying to know more information about a stock, this can significantly reduce the amount of time it will take you to ultimately make an investment decision. So I think it's really interesting and something worth looking into. And these are just some of the ways that you can use ChatGPT to research stock fundamentals. And I think Gemini is even better. So we can dive into that in another video as well. But all this was just the tip of the iceberg. So if you want to learn more about how to use AI for stock research, then subscribe to this YouTube channel and check out my newsletter on Substack. And all links will be in the description. Thanks for watching.